يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون Ramadan, to begin with, is the ninth uh, month in the Islamic lunar calendar. It is a time where Muslims all over the world, they excel in prayer, worship, invocations, devotion to God, charity, and on a bigger scale, connecting with other community members. Fasting uh, for Muslims all over the world means that we have to abstain from uh, drinking anything, eating anything, or any kind of uh, physical intimacy with one spouse from the break of dawn till sunset. Um, for Muslims all over the world, and the purpose of fasting is to become more God conscious and to help us become better people as Muslims. Like all other months during the, uh, during the Islamic lunar calendar, every month begins with the sighting of the moon and the, or the sighting of the crescent. Ramadan is no different. Muslims all over the world, they begin the month of Ramadan by sighting um, the crescent anywhere around the world. If there is any verified reports from any country that the moon or the crescent has been sighted, then that country will begin fasting the next day. And at the end of Ramadan, on the 29th day of Ramadan, Muslims all over the world will once again go back to sighting the crescent. If the sighting has been uh, established, then we will um, conclude Ramadan that same day. And if the sighting has not been established, then we will fast for one additional day and complete 30 days of fasting and then bring Ramadan to a conclusion. There are two holidays during the Islamic lunar calendar. One is Eid al-Fitr, which is the day that comes immediately after, the, after Ramadan finishes. And then there is a second day, which is called Eid al-Adha, which is the day of sacrifice or the celebration of sacrifice, wherein we uh, Muslims all over the world, they perform a sacrifice of an animal uh, in remembrance and reviving the legacy of our forefather, uh, Ibra Prophet uh, Ibrahim or Abraham, as some people uh, know him as. Now, there is no doubt about the fact that there are other religions uh, that they would command their followers uh, to fast. Fasting is not a new concept that Islam has invented, but fasting has uh, it is a concept that other prophets they would um, they would do, and they would teach and they would uh, uh, instruct their followers uh, to do. For Christians, fasting harkens back to Jesus' fast in the Judean desert, 40 days uh, in the desert uh, with no food or drink. And his fasting was a sign of Jesus' reliance on God alone. Uh, by not relying on, on bread or food uh, or anything worldly, Jesus showed his reliance entirely upon God. So. Uh, there's this idea of imitation of Jesus, this idea of, of sort of fixing the sin of Eden, but, but also there's a, there's a spiritual and existential understanding about fasting, which, which it, it, it opens up the soul to, to, to contemplate God better uh, because we're no longer you know, hungry for the things of the flesh. And, 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 and that basic theology has been with us for 2,000 years. The idea of fasting in Jewish tradition, like, like many things in, in Judaism and in other faiths, is something that, that developed over time. And so we do see in the, in the biblical tradition, um, obviously the most important day of the, uh, of the Jewish calendar is Yom Kippur, uh, which um, Jews will fast for 25 hours basically, so sundown to uh, sundown uh, from the night before and that day is devoted to to prayer uh, very intense prayer and asking God for forgiveness for for all our sins throughout the year God explains us that what is the purpose of fasting and he says to bring and to develop 
an awareness and to develop taqwa. Taqwa is the Arabic term, which means is that it helps a person to stay away from those things which displeases God. Prophets were concerned with the fact that people misunderstood why they were fasting. The prophets were very troubled by that. Um, so the, 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 there's more than one place where God says, I don't want your ritual. I don't want your sacrifices. You know, I have no use for your fasts. And so at first glance, you're like, wait a minute. So in the Torah, you said, make all these sacrifices, observe all these rituals, fast on Yom Kippur, do all that kind of stuff. Like, why are you saying, what's the deal? But of course, when you read that scripture, it clarifies. What God is saying is, if all you're doing is fasting, but at the same time, you don't repent from your sins, and you are nasty to your neighbor, and you take advantage of other people in your business dealings, and you're just in general, you're a rotten human being, but you observe all the rituals, right? Then that is meaningless. That is meaningless to God. get up I mean do you ever miss the work? um it's happened uh oh my god <laughs> back up alarm back up alarm <laughs> also I'm alone to be honest sometimes I don't even have breakfast <laughs> I just wake up maybe have like a snack maybe a piece of fruit before I would go to work or something I guess the alternative is you just don't eat all day <clears throat> yep you just suffer the consequences I mean if you miss suhoor Tough nuggies, unless obviously you're, you have medical conditions and you take medicine anyway and you can't fast. But uh, if you are eligible for fasting and you miss your suhoor, you know, tough it out and just go, just go through the day and just be patient, you know. It's going to come. It's not a lot, you know. You make it to a star, you're not gonna die. My name is Erika Perez Negron. Um, I was born and raised in Mexico City. I came to the United States when I was 19 years old. At first, the first, first day I remember, the first, first day that I ever, ever fasted, I was very afraid. Just very afraid to have a very bad headache and not being able to do it. The first day, yes, I did have a headache and my, you know, I broke my fast probably with a date, water, and two Tylenols. So my family, so for one, my family has always been really supportive of me being Muslim. And most of them kind of knew stuff about Islam and stuff already. So I would have to like let them know, like, yeah, it's Ramadan, you know, so they weren't like keeping up with the Islamic calendar and stuff all the time to know it was Ramadan. Sometimes I had to inform them, yeah, it's Ramadan. And then, then they would know, and then uh, they would know that I'm fasting. They never really, uh, pressure me and trying to eat or anything like that. Um, every once in a while they'd be like, you don't even drink water? <laughs> I was like, nope, I don't even drink water. They're like, well, you know, you can actually, you can drink something, right? You can actually just have some water throughout the day. They're like, no, no water. They're like, what? No water? like, no, no water, nothing. They're like, well, I would just die. I'm like going, we make it, it's fine. We get through it every year. And my non-Muslim friends would be like, wow, you can't eat or drink for 30 days? Like, how are you not dead? And it's like, I don't think they understand that I'm not gonna just not eat for the whole time. Like I break every single day and I eat a little bit at night and all that. During the month of Ramadan, uh, I think we uh, give more charity. I think we pray more, we worship more during this very holy month. And it's an opportunity to share your charity with others because it's not just you giving charity. It is you joining Muslim sisters and brothers who are also engaging um, in these very noble acts during the month of Ramadan. And so what do you do at the end? I mean, you know, so we have, I told them we have this big celebration. It's called Eid. And it's like after the, after we've done with Ramadan, we have this big celebration and you know, we 
eat a lot, we give out presents, we go pray, we hear a little lecture from, you know, our imam, and then we just get together as family and we just kind of hang out. So they're going, oh, so it's a lot like Christmas. I was like going, yeah, but it's better than Christmas. It's kind of like Thanksgiving and Christmas all together. That's kind of how I, how I explain Eid. On Eid day, we wake up around five o'clock to like pray the morning prayer, and then we go to the mosque and pray Eid prayer, and that's, um, there's like, a good chunk. Every Muslim in the whole entire community is probably at that mosque at the exact same time as you are. And so it's gross and sweaty, but it's the most amazing experience ever because like everybody's there at the same time. We're all doing the same moves at the exact same time. Um, and it's like, sometimes I even get chills because honestly, it's like, it's incredible. And we see another Muslim, we're like, oh, Eid Mubarak, even though we don't know you, we're like, oh my God, happy Eid, congratulations, you finished fasting just like I did. And even though I don't know you, congratulations. So I think that's my favorite part because we all just kind of come together as a community and it gets to be like that for a while. Ramadan and the first day of Ramadan and Eid al-Fitr is found on every calendar and every Google calendar, every calendar that you buy. It has become part of the American vocabulary. Uh, many people uh, that are non-Muslim actually look forward to this month to join us during break of fast and I started to hear it more on television and in the media. We really have mainstreamed this idea of Ramadan and the sacrifices and the fasting um, and the unity and the bringing of people together. So I'm very proud to call Ramadan part of an American story. Hayya <laughs> al-Falaam